Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Just Another Kill Team Podcast, connecting Kill Team communities across the globe. If you're passionate about the tactical skirmish game that brings together strategy, lore, and creativity, you are in the right place. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and stay updated with our latest episodes. If you want to support the show, check out our Patreon. Your support means a lot to us. Follow us by using the social media links in the podcast description for all the latest news, and be sure to leave a review to let us know what you think. Thanks for tuning in. Here's today's episode. Okay, we're back with Mateusz from Poland. It's been almost over a year since we last caught up with you. How's it been going? Quite good, thank you. Yeah, and it was, uh, yeah, almost a year, almost a year. Last time we were attacking in Atlanta, yep. That's true. Yeah, the last time I saw you was in Atlanta. But before that, on the podcast, you know, we were we chatted a while back talking about the growing Polish scene, and it's definitely not gotten any smaller, I assume, right? With the release of Volkus and Kill Team 3rd Edition or Kill Team 24, whatever you want to call it. Uh, yeah, it it is... I mean, the 3rd Edition, we are calling that 3rd Edition, uh, just to clarify... Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a little bit strange thing. Like <laughs> we all know that the, that the state of the game is what it is. Like in and every GW new edition release before the first uh, FAQ, it w- it will be what it is basically. And I just want to remind and maybe inform everybody who don't know that the Polish national sport is complaining. So now it is like the best time to be uh, champions in our national sports because there are plenty reasons to complain but it doesn't change the fact that the like uh, changes which we are seeing and simple release of the new thing is a big opportunity for game to grow and we can see that like people are coming they are interested what what have changed uh, some changes were, were also the things which were not accepted by some players like uh, previous obscure uh, obscurement and now they are returning and there are new people so yeah we are seeing it is growing yeah i mean obscurity is way less punishing so that you know anyone who had that experience of like oh i walked into a game and my opponent just mercilessly beat me and i can never shoot them that's kind of mostly gone away unless you're playing on beta decima i don't know if poland has picked up beta decima at all as far as having it as a format we are ignoring beta decima like uh, it, it, I, the, my private opinion is that beta decima is basically beyond salvation uh, like there are so many problems with this format maybe someday it will be but i don't think it should be uh, played on any competitive uh, real competitive uh, events this is just my opinion like if somebody is claiming that it is okay and they should play in my opinion they are pretending but whatever in poland we yeah. are ignoring how how many games is the uh, the Polish region region played on the newer version of Beta Decima with the new layouts, or is this just kind of like you just don't think that the terrain set is particularly fun because it locks people into moving in very odd positions where you have to get shot? Uh, yeah, you got the point. Like not even that that they in. I mean, this is the one of the issues that they are forced to move like in one pattern because Kill Team is already a game which is closed on very small uh, area. It is very small warm-up. And mm-hmm. Beta Decima, what it is doing, it is basically taking away another 50% of that play mat and forcing you to just go like corridors. And this is like... Um, there are so many things which are incorrect with this layout. I don't know, probably in the whole Poland, a couple of games happened. But in our tournaments, now we are just before our team nationals championships. We are basically ignoring Beta Decima, uh, especially that we already have an absurd problem with balance because the, of the new edition, which we all have around the world. And Beta Decima is even generating the absurd absurd amounts of 
balance issue on its own. So if we will combine that, I think world will blow. I mean, like, I don't want to give Polish another thing to complain about because uh, <laughs> I will just have a stroke. So sorry. <laughs> So I guess that, you know, kind of loops us back to one of the fun topics of the new edition outside of, you know, probably the smorgasbord of FAQ questions that you've had to answer in Poland, because, you know, for as simple as the new rules are, there are tons of new edge cases, which I'm sure many players have found and you've had to answer. You know, how are players finding the general team balance and are they enjoying space, the Space Marine meta? No, they are not. <laughs> no, no, they are not. Uh, this is cool that the mech is really, really playable because plenty of people want to play the Space Marines, uh, boys, etc. I don't. I never like Space Marines super, uh, super ma- uh, good. Everybody knows that I am a Astra Militarum boy uh, and the balls of steel and all of that. <laughs> but mm-hmm. uh, but uh, I understand that people are happy and they like to see that on the table. But the problem now is that the game is super. Uh, super frustrating and meta is very very close in my opinion and it is not only mine but the like a top of polish players meta is close to like four teams mm. because 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 of gatekeeping the biggest problem of gatekeeper is legionaries which are basically cutting off 70 percent of meta like a just try to be a shooty horde like a veteran guardsman, like a now, now Death Corps of Creek, and try to kill legionaries. Like on Slanesh, for example. Okay, shooting on five, super cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, or on, or, uh, on Nurgle, ignoring piercing, like on everything. Super fun, super fun. And everybody is like, okay, I'm not playing uh, Marines, so they are trying and, uh, to dent that targets throwing every dice they can and still almost nothing is happening so it is very frustrating because this is giving the people the feeling of the like um, damage da- da- damage absorption pillows running around the war mat and nothing is happening they are simply losing so uh, they are not liking that and nobody likes the game where the and 80 percent of their toys are off the table because other 20 are making them unplayable. Yeah, um, I've been a long time Space Marine player, and now I'm like, I was like a hipster about it a, a little bit, and now like people are like flooding in, and there's just, just like Space <laughs> Marines are cool, they're good. Um, so then I've been like, oh man, like what is it like on the other side of this? And then I've kind of just tried to like run a game against my own intercession and like play like Blooded. I did a few different games, and I was just like, this is completely hopeless like yeah, i could this- probably have five intercessors and still just slaughter any horde and it's just like you literally what i did with the intercessors well this is what i always do just put them all on engage you don't worry or care about anything you just push forward and slaughter everyone and there's just it's like there's not a single thing that any horde team that i've found that can do anything about it at all uh inquisition can Inquisition will tear you apart, basically, if they are playing correctly. Like, I don't think that even Angels of Death are so big problem. Here we can have a mixed opinion, but I understand what you are talking about, because this is exactly the casus which my friend uh, who is going for Atlanta for championships from Great Britain uh, called me and he told, dude, like... I've pulled my blooded, I really want to go with blooded to Atlanta, and... I was trying to play against Legionaries or Le- Angels of Death, I don't remember, against my friend. And there is basically nothing I can do, exactly as you told. There is, There are like 80% of teams are just watching as they are dying. And as I said, I don't even think that the Angels of Death are so big problem. I think Legionaries, uh, uh, Warp Coven and Inquisition are the biggest problem. And Inquisition is where it is, that at the top only because it can counter the powerful mech. Like, they are doing something against them, which is still not an easy match, but they can block by nope, etc., etc. Like, but this is like, yeah, you were a hipster, now you are not. Now you're... Now, now you're the, now you're the horde. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, not gonna lie, I've completely spent, like, the last several days being like, what non-elite faction can I bring to New York Open, which is in, like, a week. Um, but I don't know. I think I'm just going to play Phobos. 
<laughs> what hard faction Phobos? Yeah, of course it makes sense. Like, for, as I said, the only hard faction which is now in the play, in my opinion, is Inquisition. Like, no, no other hard is like depends also because uh, by hard we are understanding like twelve plus models. Yes, like we are not talking about mid range because corsairs are also cool. They can do something against elites. There are like exceptions. But for the Horde, I think only Inquisition. I also played uh, Road Traders, which can have some successes. Uh, but it is very dicey. It is very dicey. Because of that ignoring piercing, like, it is too dicey. In the end, there will be a game when you will flop three key rolls from your asset in the row and there is no game. And uh, mech players just have to roll three plus all the game and they just survive and stand in the middle like... Ah. Yeah, it does feel like with the drop in lethality for the Space Marines to get boosted, giving a pair of teams the subtract piercing is pretty rough because that is the way that generally you can at least start an advantage before the the horde of chain swords gets to you and starts chopping you up in little bits. I, there are a couple teams, and I think you mentioned it just a second ago, uh, Matthias. So I want to call out, you know, Corsairs are a team with still a ton of AP2. So even though you ignore Pierce 1, you can still get piercing against them, which is pretty good. And you have a 6-7 Pierce 1 weapon if your opponent is Nurgle or Warp Coven and trying to block your crits. Or block your hits, not your crits. And then the Star Striders, they also have a couple of coin flips. You mentioned the big melta gun from the sky, which is always very powerful. But you now have the Electromeister who hits on threes. So if you just drop a bunch of crits on people, that is a way to overwhelm the minus piercing. And in some situations, if you just are angling for crits, you can overwhelm those three up saves, which is something that Jason has done with Phobos against Warp Coven. Yeah, yeah, it works exactly. And also Assassin now uh, have Zealot. So you can quite efficiently trade her in the edgy moment. She will die, but she will take the mega guy with her, so it is good enough. But, but, but still, in, uh, I'm telling that road trader can compete, they have a chance, but it is still a very uphill battle. Uh, yeah, uh, there is... There's an element of that in the game right now where I've mentioned that it feels kind of funny because now everyone in the entire Imperium and the entire galaxy is now looking at Space Marines and going, oh no, there's a Space Marine coming to the battlefield. We got to prepare. They're fin- they are finally terrifying. Yeah, because, yeah, you know, in the old edition, we were all like, oh, whatever, we'll throw a crack grenade, we'll check a plasma, it'll be fine. Now everyone is like in our boots, quaking in fear. Unfortunately, it is what it is. Yeah. How we are telling. Yeah, so in Poland, what other teams have people been playing to try to find success? I know you mentioned Corsairs, Star Striders a little bit. Has anyone tried Novitiates or any of these other human-wide teams or maybe, you know, Commandos or some of the some of the teams that were powerful before and kind of took a step back? Uh, commandos for sure, uh, because there were um, there were plenty of players of Commandos all over the world. But uh, Novitiate is a funny castle because... Almost nobody played novitiates in Poland since two years, like mm-hmm. uh, which is uh, not everywhere uh, everywhere around the world. Like I, uh, this is the team which was were simply from some point uh, of the game ignored in this country because of uh, maybe even without a reason. This is this is just how it is. So now nobody uh, I never saw for till this moment the novitiates in the new edition. Uh, Corsairs for sure, Hand of the Archon have a boom, because I think this is a great remake for the team, and now they are uh, super funny to play and still ve- very powerful. They have mm. quite uh, quite close castles to Corsairs, but I think Corsairs are still now more powerful against Elites, so at least before Elites will be nerfed, because they will be nerfed, I hope, they have to be nerfed, please. <laughs> like, what the hell? They have to be nerfed. Uh, uh, then then uh, Hand of the Archon, I think, will be cool. We have uh, quite a plenty of players of Salvadors and mm-hmm. Jaegers, because, you know, there is this uh, unrolling joke that uh, squads are basically polished in the space. 
Like uh, po- Poland can finally into space, so this is a popular team here, and I also love to play them. You you know they are sturdy, they are stubborn, they are giving grudges, they are Polish, obviously. Yeah, like so. <laughs> so. And to be fair, both of the teams I think look pretty good for this edition. Yes. You know, damage mitigation kind of all over the place. You've got fun tricks. Some of them are very powerful. You know, being able to blow people up really nicely and then you know unfortunately the jaegers kind of suffer i think against specifically space marines because yeah, they ju- like there's a- just no armor piercing so mm-hmm. they walk at you you die very slowly yeah very slowly but dying yeah and uh, but i think that both of these team will be super good and uh, but after the first rebalance probably. Uh, as you said, they both have uh, super tricks. And in general, I am very happy about this addition that I-, I think the super play will be for the like medium teams. 9 to 10 to uh, may- maybe catching 11 operatives. So elf teams, uh, dwarf teams, uh, elite trooper teams will have their moment. But for now, unfortunately, meta is so closed by uh, Legionaries Inquisition and Warp Coven that nothing can go beyond that. Maybe sometimes some team try to pull out the head around the corner, but it is immediately shoot down by the, by the bolt pistol. So it is what it is. Um, I actually would love to do a little bit more of a deep dive about Inquisition if anyone here feels qualified to do so. Um, Because I know they can they can like counter people, but like what else do they have that's scary? I mean, I feel like they've got tons of people that hit on fours, and that's just not reliable enough. So even if you, I mean, it it seems to me, and you know, I don't I don't know them that well, um, but you know, you you counter my ploy. I'm a space marine. I just tear you in half, anyways. What? What is it They're, that they do that kills Space Marines? Uh, they have now Caster Kings with 3+. They have... Uh, like, the... I, oh, to answer the first question. I am qualified to talk about playing Inquisition, so I will answer. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, uh, the, the biggest issue of the Inquisition for the whole of the rest, uh, like uh, the previous uh, edition, was the lack of reliability yeah what you told the bunch of four plus hitting guys clunky access to real like the the quarry mechanic is the the clunkiest of the clunkiest way to provide reliability to your team uh, and now all of the reliability of inquisition get buffed so for example uh, example the chainsword baby is hitting on three plus without a reroll and without feel no pains but nobody have feel no pains in the old way and she's hitting on free plus. The new quarry is giving you ceaseless, the new ceaseless. Uh, so it is also bigger point. You have an equipment point uh, when you can once a game reroll quarry to a different opponent because it gets stuck uh, and opponent run away from you, which is already a big thing. Uh, the buffs and in general magic, psy- uh, psychic and all of that uh, also is redesigned now, so the blessing from the uh, your psyker, the navigator guy, is also uh, uh, holding on him longer for the next turn before he will cast it again. Right. Like all the like all the magic in the game now. Uh, there's a, there's a, there was like a layer of consistency that went throughout the yes. game. So now you can like stage your your mystics scry ability so that next turn it's ready to go. So you don't exactly. have to like do it, then go fight with the person. So now that first target, if you get the quarry with the normal to hit or you know hit to crit is just kind of nuts, right? Exactly. And also on top of that, you have access to Caster Kings, as I told, which are, which are now ballistic skills, sorry, free plus, not four plus. So suddenly you are a very reliable team. The amount of AP weapon uh, restric- uh, restriction from previous rebalance is gone away. So you can have a multi melta on your servitor, plasma pistol on your plasma baby. And plasma and melta from Kasserkins, and suddenly you are just melting space marines. Problem is, of course, with the teams, uh, with two teams, legionaries and 
The second one is, of course, war Warp Coven, because they have Ignore Piercing. But Inquisi uh, Inquisition can block this ploy in the key moment. What's more, against Warp Coven, you can have Sisters of Silence, for example, and always surprise your opponent, uh, ag especially against Warp Coven. Because previously, rosters were in-game, but now rosters are not in game so when i am going to play my inquisition on dmp i am bringing like 50 models with me like literally 50 models and you can really surprise somebody because if the warp coven player would like to go with uh, staffs and pistol to try shoot you and he will face you with the sisters of silence he's suddenly fighting you in melee with the free for damage because sisters of silence are reducing psychic damage of melee weapons with psychic keyword which the staffs from warp coven are to three four and they are hitting you bad the nasty ladies are hitting you with the four six power weapon on three plus so suddenly inquisition is not a team about bunch of people who are hitting on four plus without the reload rerolls because they still have clanky rerolls but at least a little bit better, but they are generally hitting on free plus with the bazillion of AP with ability to blocking everything, and there are plenty of them. Uh, Inquisition is basically the second after Legionaries most broken team team at the moment, in my opinion. Like they require a couple of very solid. I mean, they shouldn't have a couple of very solid nerves. They should have plenty of very small nerves. In my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I think they're one of their cr the craziest thing about Inquisition right now is you need to break your wallet to play them, right? I know you mentioned you need 50 models, but if you're going to play at a tournament, you got to have 50 models that are all painted if you want to yep. play them well. If you just want to play the okay one, if we were to t if you were to tell other people who are listening that are interested in Inquisition agents, what you know, like pair of extra operatives would you say you must bring to a big tournament if you wanted to give a little bit of help? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> it is hard. Uh, so Casa Kings, that's for sure. Uh, I would bring always comms. This is must have comms, mm -hmm. uh, Melta Plasma, uh, just in case sharpshooter and granite launcher. But these two are uh, optional uh, because usually you are going with plasma and Melta especially in this meta. Uh, the Recon guy, because now he's super good because he can give you a free reposition uh, in the strategic... Not, uh, not reposition, dash. Uh, sorry, dash ploy. Uh, and also removing obscur uh, Obscurement uh, in, in the area. Uh, and Medic and Mine Layer, which is... Uh, Melta Mine is just if you find out the good way, like blocking the door, that Space Marine want to come here. Okay, 2d6 plus 3 damage, like... Even Space Marines in this state are... Um, uh, I will pass. I am going to another door, sorry. <laughs> like, And they yeah. are stop stopping the action, because this is also worth mentioning that these kind of mines are now not stopping activation, they are stopping action. The wording was changed. Uh, also, uh, the second uh, at detachment, which I think is a must, is a death corpse. Uh, because Inquisition is on the top now, because other horde factions and middle tiers, which were hard matches to them, are hold at bay, basically. So, for example, Necrons uh, and uh, Felgors are hold at bay, because uh, Legionaries... So, but if in <laughs> but in case for any horde team, it is good to have dev, dev corps, which have access to three gunners now, which is also a mistake. I think that they should have max two gunners. Uh, so uh, sniper, melta, plasma there, just in case flamer, and because flamer can be usable at, uh, on them for sure. And basically all gunners like mine layer, medic comes, uh, confident, hardened. <laughs> And bruiser, so quite, quite a lot. Well, what, I you're, know. what you're telling me is uh, you could take the death core out of the man, but you can't take the death core out of the Inquisition agents, huh? Because <laughs> you were one of the big players who really loved death core in last edition, right? 
I loved veter- uh, veteran guardsmen. I hate Death Court of Creek, and I'm not <laughs> using them. Mine Arcadians, okay? Sorry, but <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, 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 yeah. It was quite a, a big thing. But this is the way. Like, if you will now play with Kasekins, you will lose. If you will play with Death Corps, you will lose. But if you are taking them as a part of Inquisition, yeah, then, then you have a chance. And also, I would uh, take the Sisters of Silence, as I mentioned, just in case for. Uh, Roach factor. I think in the most uh, situation they will be a, rather a meme, uh, but there are f- moments when you can really surprise with them and just roll over the opponent, especially against Warp Coven. I wonder if any of the core Inquisition operative choices have changed between the two editions, or are things pretty much kind of like the same? In the old edition, I know the Mystic and the Pistolier were basically, you always take them. You always have your, your guy and the Tome Skull, but wondering if any of the other choices have changed because of the context of the new edition with only three objectives, like is the Scrivener on the, or the Auto Savant on the back line more powerful now because, you know, you could just do a thing and then leave it? The the guy who is taking notes. Yeah. No, no. He uh, I, th- he never saw the table, and he will never see. In my opinion, like uh, there is no time for taking notes on the battlefield. Like uh, it, Inquisition simply cannot afford the another support uh, unit. They have too many support units. They uh, they need go and do something unit and. The taking the nerdy guy is not an uh, option here. He is not meeting the requirement, in my opinion, at least. So, yeah. So what? Uh, what other? Yeah. What other operatives are you taking? I think that not not much uh, changed from the previous edition. Like Servitor with Melta was. Um, uh, I know that the plasma is heavily overrated in the previous edition, and in this, I think it can be even uh better but i uh, melta against mech is still the best option like ap2 mm-hmm. so uh, and this is de- still deleting marines and the uh, melt on the whole board like oh cool oh, this sounds cool uh leader of course because he have to be there uh redemptionist the baby with the big sword like now she's hitting on three plus this this has uh, this has changed uh, so this is a big buff in the end like i as i said she doesn't have feel no pains but nobody have feel no pains now she have this very clunky feel no pain that on five plus she's reducing damage and this works but on legionaries on seven wounded model it doesn't change almost never anything there are very edge situation when it have any impact on the game but still she's hitting on three plus so sudden suddenly you are reliable and she have that hitting on death still so mm-hmm. she is very good for trading securing doors on itd or anything uh of course the default veteran still like a powerhouse charging from conceal just a scratch every turn uh, in melee like he can d- deliver some blood boils to your opponent uh, he received a small nerf because rip keyword was uh, deleted mm. from the game so uh, so this is uh, uh, the same nerf affected by the way redemption is like uh, so the guy with the flamer and chain sword is still the same uh, in in some situation, I think he can be taken over a servitor if you know that you will have very dynamic game and you are not playing against mech and you need basically people who will be close to your objective and react very rapidly. Because, uh, because like, he have a flamer in the end and if you will dent anybody previously with anything, he gaining relentless on the chainsword. So he's like a hybrid of the gunner and melee fighter just in case. So this is cool. He, he also have that uh, gas mask, uh, so he's not affected by stun grenades and other thing it is also uh, very good so if just in case if you need more very uh, very reliable gunner because flamer hits on two plus for example when you are playing with the death corpse so you have already five gunners free from death corpse and uh, sorry, f- four gunners, three from Death Corps and Pistol Baby. You have that fifth one, and you can go like a double flamer, one from De- Death Corps and one from him. So there are options from uh, for him. And still, the dagger guy, still, I don't know when I would be taking him, probably never, 
So he is like a best friend of the nerdy guy. They are taking notes together. Uh, Hex uh, guy, I think still he has a really big niche to play against Felgors. Because there is, even for a meme, even for a meme, like play, playing against Fergal players and when the goat is going on rampage and you are just coming to, the, uh, to her and, no, 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 chill out, dude, chill out, it will be good. And she is just dying. It is, it is like, it is like, for a meme, even for a meme, it is worth it. Like, uh, and I, but but I think this is the only m- moment when he is worth taking. And this is all. I don't know. No, th- there are no other. There are no. Yeah. Other. So Pistolier agent, Hexorcist, and the Death World, the Death World veteran, along with the the big gun, and then you kind of have a couple choices on your flex pick. Oh, and your quest keeper. Yeah, yeah. So you, those are those are your generic five, and every once in a while you'll switch out the gun servitor if you need a little bit more built, more built mobility, or if you don't need the piercing two for some reason, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, servitor can sometimes slow you down because he still need the other guy next to him to advise to have two APL. Like the of course the most funny situation is when the guy who is advising him is a school. Like this is also a meme. Like uh, Yeah, they stand together and they just uh, <laughs> they look at each other like where do I go, boss? Like yeah. go over there. It's like Burp. Yeah, two blind people are thing. talking about colors, yeah. So yeah. something like that. So. With no well, offense to the blind people, of course, like just to be clear. a very powerful team then. And definitely right. one of the teams that sticks out right now is having a lot of power budget, especially with, you know, I, I know at the World Championships last year, you were playing Inquisition Agents back when Corey was just balanced and people could run away from you. So now you have Ceaseless and some of your dudes hit on threes. A lot of your dudes hit on threes. And now if your opponent runs away once a game, you can move the quarry to someone close by so you can still get the quarry to jump on probably the second turn where it really matters to get some momentum going. It depends on the it depends on the game very much depends on the initiative. But yeah, as as you are telling, suddenly you are not the hitting on fours with some uh, some models on three plus. You are a team hitting on three plus, and some of your models are hitting on four plus. Yeah, the reliability has definitely mm-hmm. gone up. Uh, actually, one of those things that I'm actually curious about, you know, you mentioned that you have to be playing around the mechs. How has Poland and some of your upper end Polish players been approaching the new scoring system? Because that's probably the real the real crux of the issue right now is trying to figure out how to work around these new scoring tracks. Because before we could play objectives and just stand around, wait for the Marines to come over. They had to go over there, sit around. But that's not the world we live in anymore. Space Marines only have three objectives and they can just run at you and they get points for killing you. So how have players been adjusting to finding avenues around the Space Marines? In general, there are uh, people are liking the new scoring system. Of course, there is a. I think this is the problem in the game that the first turn is super passive now because of lack of scoring and lack of motivation to go to the middle. So there, there are games which are very, very passive, especially that everybody can change to engage and punish you very easily uh, now. But uh, how people are finding the way to play around the mech, they don't. <laughs> because this is impossible, basically. This is the same casus. Like, the, the problem is that you have to play the game till the end of the game now because of the new scoring system, which is correct. And uh, I love the fact that you can play around your opponent. So, for example, you know that you won't kill him very efficiently, so you will score, like, maybe two kill ops points, but you will be super good into kiting him and, for example, planting beacons, which I am plenty of times doing. Uh, and, and, for example, against Warp Cover or Legionaries, because they are limited amount of your opponent models, so you can uh, go around them. And shooting them with models without AP still doesn't have any sense. So, like, it is better to score point. Uh, but in the end, you are in the position where they will just run at you. They will kill almost everything. So they will probably gather more points from kill ops. They will score primaries because, as you said, there are three primaries. So they are in upper hand uh, to gather from primary and in tech ops on that level they don't care like because if they score max in two categories and you will even max in your one category then 
you still lost. So it is very, very hard. It is a very unhealthy meta, but just we have yeah, to be it is it is definitely hard. I think one of the fun things about reasonably, you know, obvious strong men in a meta means that anyone who can figure out a way to attack that gets an advantage that the the guys on top might not have realized because there's a difference between playing with friends where the space marines are unkillable and playing against guys who <clears throat> are actually trying to get their AP2 guns in the correct spot or they see their opponent, you know, hit the pierce minus one and they back off for a turn and try not to go after your models or wait for you to charge and do all this other stuff to try to get the wave so finding ways to stage so that if your opponent hits you they're not getting two kills and then they're in an exposed position that's probably a thing that inquisition and some of the horde teams get to do but if you're playing the more mid-range teams you got to find a way to at least start a fight get a marine get them down to like half wounds and then go from there right yeah, you have to dent him to the death. Like, but this, there are very sad pictures about denting to the death, like a rubric which is uh, sitting in the middle of the field. You are shooting with everything, like what you have. Plasmas, last guns, uh, bolters, like swearing, curses, everything that you have. And every time when you go through that two plus save, the wizard which is staying next to him just doing a, like a flipendo and he's healed to the full again like so, yeah, so he, he, he cracks he cracks the open of the armor and pours in more dust yeah 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 more that like uh, he's burning cigarettes and just adding to the table like uh, uh this is here we are coming back to the comment which i already done that the game is extremely frustrating uh, in some moments have you found in the polish scene that at the top end, everyone is playing Space Marines. I'm kind of curious because I know that we talk about the meta online and, you know, with friends, it's very easy to like talk about this stuff. But when you guys have had the tournaments as of late, I don't know if you've had a reasonably large tournament. I have really been quite keeping track of if any region has had like a 30 man tournament at the moment. Has it been like 50% of the meta is just Space Marines? We had 20 for now because we gone on total bazinga and we played our first tournament in the day of the release oh, yeah, of yeah, the yeah. game nice, so nice. Because, because why not and now in the next week we have like almost 50 people tournament uh, so we will have a, a bigger uh, amount to bigger sample fast. size yeah yeah exactly but the problem is that we already see the pattern. There are plenty of legionaries, but not only of, uh, only them. There are Nemesis Claws, there are Angels of Death. So these teams are are there in big numbers. Sure. But also there are like a Corsairs, which I mentioned. Inquisition, there are only two players for now, myself and another one. Uh, but there is also the factor which you mentioned, that playing Inquisition correctly requires a bazillion of models. And there is also, a, like, in my opinion, like, playing mech is still much simpler than playing Inquisition correctly. Even if Inquisition is overpowered, just completely clear, I am always uh, telling that it is absurdly overpowered team, like, on the level of Legionaries now. But it is still requires you to hide correctly. In Legionaries, there are games which you will basically run and win like we think it's not gonna happen uh, at all so it is not as popular there are some hint of the archon but still yes we are seeing this trend that mechs are on their prime basically and they will be like a thickness of this tournament but we also have to go through that so gw can see the data that look look what is happening yeah, um, I want to hear some horror stories. Like, what have we tried that completely didn't work? Because um, I'm sure there's a ton of them. I mean, like, as I kind of mentioned at the beginning, um, I noodled around with trying to find ways with blooded to just, like, kill, you know, any kind of space marine. Um, and uh, they can do a surprising amount of damage, just like, you know, uh, a bajillion dudes in melee, uh, especially when they blow up and do more damage when they die. It, it, like, the damage output is there, but they just, like, don't have the staying power to push at all. So it's just, if the Space Marines stand on all the objectives and then slaughter anyone that moves forward, you just, it's, you can't do anything about it. Um, but it is surprisingly killy. Like, even just, like, lasgun, mass lasgun fire, um, you just do the, the mark, 
uh, what's it called, glory kill, and then you just shoot four las guns at one space marine, and he might even die from that. Um, <laughs> there's all sorts of stuff like that that is just like out there, and it's like there's pieces of ingredients, but it still ends in a horror story. Does anyone else have any horror story of like bouncing off of space marines and being slaughtered? Like what have we have. tried that fails? Yeah, I have. And for example, when I was experimenting with the uh, Inquisition against uh, Warp Coven, uh, and I was pretty sure that the Kasakins are the answer, the correct answer, but I, okay, let's try with the Death Corps. I will go just the way which you described now, that I will throw everything at you, I have a bazillion of gunners, you will feel the power. No, opponent have not feel the power, I feel the big, fi- big power armored fist Th- uh, pulled through my arsehole like this this was the, the result because 4 plus with clanky rerolls was not enough basically to put almost any mech down uh, so it uh, ended up horribly for me this is uh, i just this is exactly the scenario which you are telling i am trying to hit you as hard as i can and i am just flopping off like a boxing duel between guy who has 80 kilograms and he is quite good but from the other side you have like a 120 kilograms guy and he is just like pulling you and throw out of the ring yeah so yeah the weight divisions are just way off right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. but I, I think there are plenty and uh, when I am even playing in the local club because I'm not living in Warsaw now, so it is harder for me to play, but I'm still going there to play with my uh, drop zone uh, friends. It is like a non-stop, as I told you, complaining Polish, like a, almost equivalent. Uh, and uh, I am hearing like from the next tel- table, every game, like anybody is trying to kill mech with not other mech. Like, what the hell is happening? How can you play that? It is unbeatable. I cannot do nothing. Even with the teams which supposed to do something against them, like like salvagers who are quite efficient uh, mech killers because of super hard-hitting guns, uh, grudge tokens, ignoring obscurity, blah, 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 everything. Piercing crits one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, piercing crits one with grudges, of, of course, uh, as you're telling, plasma knives. And, and now they are just like a lit, uh, like a dwarf, Polish dwarves hitting the Next time I will get you. <laughs> like, they just, they just put a grudge on the player for the next time. Yeah, they show yeah, up. yeah, yeah, yeah. For after the balance, um, status late. For the after the balance data slate, yeah. And this is also a curious topic because I think that after the first uh, data slate, there will be a situation that the shit which is not hitting the fan now will hit the fan again then because the upper shit will be removed. So there will be a place. So I think Felgors will return to the cancer state. Uh, like a uh, hero tech will go up, but still about hero tech, there are different opinions which are mixed. I simply hate necrons, so uh, th- so my opinion can be impacted by that. Uh, but I think it will be again the pro- problems will reoccur. May- maybe broad brothers will come again and uh, hit the fan also. I have this feeling that the Broad Brothers are, in the end, slightly uh, weaker than previous edition. I mean, they are definitely weaker. Uh, some tricks just were less, taken I think out. they lost a lot of reliability on their big power pieces, so that move from 2-up to 3-up is a yes. huge one for yes. them. Because at the end of the day, you sacrifice a lot of power on Brood Brothers for a 3 APL operative with 9 wounds. So if it doesn't do a kill when you need to at the, exactly. up, like, at the last moment, and suddenly your team is just like, well, good, we hit on 4s, but we've spent and, all this power budget on this thing that doesn't do anything. And you, ca- and you cannot go with the Bazinga play of going with your grenade thrower for the other side of the uh, of the board uh, and f- because indirect is not a fact, it will solve nothing. Uh, and also you don't have the old uh, dynamite. You have the new. Di- you know, have a new bomb which have only three inches to be thrown. Uh, also, the new heavy keyword makes your sniper much uh, weaker. So there are plenty of fi- uh, small hits which have hit them and 
I think they are lower. I still hate their dash. I think it should be nerfed. Even if I won a WTC with Broad Brothers, I think it should be nerfed, basically. Because, like, it shouldn't be that you can go with dash and then move and dash and shoot. It should, like, if you done that dash, you shouldn't be able to do charge or the dash in your activation. And the problem is solved. It will be just like a bonus APL for dash. It will be okay CP then. Uh, but, but now it is something which I hate. But still, this is the, hit, uh, this is the thing which, uh, which is significantly lower. But after the, like the Legionaries Warp Coven Inquisition will be like going down, maybe they will still hit the fan very... Uh, very I think, heavily. We'll I think, see. Yeah, by my eyes, Felgor is one of those teams that, like, as I was doing reviews for Goonhammer, I'm looking at them like, hmm, they've got a lot of, of their nerfs rescinded. So, yeah. So, yeah, like, the moment is... that Legionary stop keeping Felgor down, yes. I suspect they will be scary again. But maybe exactly. that's not the worst thing in the world. I don't know. I know. I agree with you 100%. I think that the in the same patch, proactively we should nerf Felgor. Like, be, because Felgors are kept at bay by Legionaries, as you mentioned, yeah, or sure, by yeah. Angels of Death uh, also. I think when, Legionary are, like, the good one le- right now, because Slanesh yeah. just, like, wrecks Felgor yeah, so hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just don't uh, hit you ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Slanesh uh, or Angels of Death also, I think, is quite a big thing to go mm-hmm. through. Uh, but, but, but still, I agree with you completely. When this gatekeeper will be removed from them we will see only one big meh like are around the world and <laughs> i hate this fact because like necrons and felgors are the two teams which i think i hate the most because uh, because i am always calling them the idiot proof uh teams i know that somebody like uh, I, Shane will ha- hate me for that, but because I know that he loves to play. Ne- uh, Those are Necrons. both of his teams. You can't say that on this podcast, Matej. <laughs> yeah, you can. To be that fair, I think that Hyratech take a little bit more work in this edition. Like, there's definitely more stuff going on. I think there was like a gray air, like there was a Goldilocks zone for them in the early part of this year, where you got up on twos, you got up at full health, and you just blew people up. And that yeah. basically is gone in the new edition. You always have a chance to do a get up but now it's on a three up so it's just gonna be less reliable than it was at like the heights of their power earlier this year plus like sure, all of their free actions went away like the bugs don't do their stuff for free you can't command people for free you can't like all, all of their free actions went away and i think the huge amount of their power was from that as well uh truth will be not be an obstacle for my agenda uh, so, so. So yeah. sorry, you, you have to accept that. Yeah, your higher tech hatred goes yeah. too deep. I I hate hero tech. Uh, you can be complete uh, completely right, and then I will stop to hate hero tech. Uh, obviously, but I still have basically PTSD. Like <laughs> this, uh, so maybe because of that. But about Felgors, I am sure that if they won't be held at bay, because as you told uh, Travis, their nerves simply gone away and suddenly we are in the game where ap2 is almost absent in the game when mm-hmm. grenades and indirects are absent in the in the end and as i as i told you will see uh, sorry here only one big meh and it will be disgusting so i yeah. think they should receive that small nerfs at least to cut them down to the level from the second Edition yeah. and they will be fine. Like, I think some of the the changes to their health, just making them a flat ten wound team, is probably for the best. I don't really quite understand why they printed them again at a bunch of elevens. Which you know, by the end of the two year run for them, they had like rolled back a bunch of those. So because it is, because it is more spicy kebab, probably. Yeah. Like I don't <laughs> know. Yeah, we're in a very spicy world after this. Yeah, after yeah, the yeah. perceived space marine patch gets happened, we'll see. We'll see what happens in yeah. three months. I, I really hope that GW will address that in time, like uh, do that proactively. But I, uh, they don't have tendency for that usually. I, 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 I'm afraid. So we will see. I yeah. hope it will happen. I'm hoping I that Kill Team is the place where they have a little bit more room to experiment with some slightly more dynamic, slightly more uh, forward thinking changes. Because the rulebook, you know, they took the step of trying to add in developer commentary where possible. 
obviously there's still a lot of things that people are working on and there's a lot of you know weird areas which is fun yeah and to uh, every community which want to play competitive things now had to release their own faq basically to or uh, uh, we also released that and these faqs are tremendously different from each other <laughs> yes, that's true. i haven't looked at looked at some of the other faqs but i wrote a 19 page faq that tries to go over raw and rules as intended for the new york open and then someone mentioned that they needed a tldr so i just went through and added a tldr for the 19 pages <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but like, just completely honestly, this is the work for the company. They have to fix that, and sooner is better. So, yeah. I did find it a little fun for there to be like the whole world is kind of a little bit confused, and then at some point, James Workshop will descend from the heavens and say, "Stop that!" And then we all readjust, <laughs> adjust to the new world order. Yeah, this is a funny thing, but because uh, we have like now a series of shit shows here. Like ev every evening after the games, there is a we have a chat on Facebook on with our other pro players, and they are shitting about everything. Like this game is unplayable now. Like why they taken away our good game? Why it is released in this step? And everybody is fro everywhere that and one of us like three days ago came and told dudes but it was the same the previous edition after first faq nobody will remember about that and everybody and everybody looked at him go away like why you are destroying <laughs> us this is our shit show like why they you told are him they to it's like the guy who the comic of like the guy told them the yeah, truth yeah. and they all booed <laughs> It's true, you know, In the Dark was not great as a first release, you know, and it got way better by the end of it after we did some adjustments. And I think that the bones of this edition are probably in a better spot than the release yes. of the first game. So even though there's some stuff I'm not super enthused with, and even though there's some stuff where Raw is very confusing, you know, whether or not indirect strips or seek strips super conceal, there's no way for me to say one way or the other right now because I don't know what they intend at all in that situation. Yeah. It's still it's still an easier bone to work with than what we had last edition. Things they're they're trying to use language, so like the commentary between fighting and retaliating, yes. now that there are actual words, there's less gray area. So like mm -hmm. a lot of the gray area has been stripped off, but that meant that we create a new gray area. So once they fix that, it should be a better situation. And it definitely yeah, yeah. feels like if they keep this as like the the core rule set, we have room for even if they switch another edition three years down the line it'll be a more refined version of whatever this is. And moving around on a kill team board, looking from the position of your model's face to someone else, those are all things that get you in the world. And now that we've got a big gun in the background, it's even more fun. <laughs> of course. Like, uh, but, but I think the Polish community here is quite an extreme because I was talking with them. Dudes, like, uh, I talked with Spanish and they are, like like always, like, uh, it is bad, but it will be good. Like, because this is, uh, this is basically how they are treating the world, yeah? Uh, and, I, and Americans are also not like that. Even British are not like that. And they are a na nation which are constantly living in the fog. And <laughs> still, suddenly we are ha unhappy about everything. Like, how short is your memory? Uh, who still remember the release state of the Pathfinders before the even first nerf. What about uh, Custodis on the release patch when there were emergency patches? It was the only case in the whole game when the team was nerfed not by a uh, rebalance patch, it was nerfed by FAQ directly because it was making game unplayable <laughs> against them. Yeah, so, that's true. You know, we're talking is... about the mech equivalents now. What about the custodies equivalent? Then? Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. And and we already gone through that. And in the after the because I think that the Kill Team Second Edition was super good game after first year. And as you told, the bones are better now. So I think that uh, Kill Team Third Edition will be pretty good game after first patch. And after second patch, it will be even better than the second edition and only better with time. So, but still, I just want to make it transparent. It is not an excuse for the, this size of company to release game in this state 
and we have to be transparent about that because the constant acceptance from the community is a problem like as you told some new gray gray areas are happening because changes happen this is normal thing and having issue with that is like a childish thing but Coming back to the problems with ITD, which were already resolved, like that you cannot throw barricade next to the door to block them. Now, by the book, you can. So everybody uh, FAQ that, so you can't because it is obvious. But this is still, this is the problem which was resolved. And we are going back to the same problem. Why? There is no reason and there is no excuse for that. And this is something which has to be transparently said by the community. Yes. I think that that's true. I'm a big fan of like, we make slow and steady progress and the games gets better and better. But anytime we take a big step back, you know, terrain being a big one or, you know, the climb, like the climb dashing stuff where you can't append movement. So now things are awkward to get around. Yes, those exactly. things were mostly solved. So I'm curious why some of those things went away. So it's good to note when those things are annoying. Cause you know, for my patch for the New York open, I said that if you get stuck on player equipment, then go ahead and take a dash as long as you're doing a drop. So you're not using to climb or jump somewhere else. So there's a couple things like that. And you're right. Those are problems when they come up because it's weird that we had things kind of okay settled. And then some of the stuff just like, Oh, we'll just put back 11 wounds on Felgors or we'll just take away dashes for climbs just because you know we just want things to be a little bit more different yeah and talking about felgors because plenty of things could uh, happen there like one one team is like and this couple of wounds but like with the itd or as you mentioned the uh, connecting reposition with dash like why 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 we are again in the same problem which we solved like two and a half year ago or even three years ago like running circles is never a good thing to yeah. be that, you know, I, I'm sure that everybody is excited for the next box. So, are you going to be a Rattlings player? You know, just as a final thing before we head out. Of course, I am, and uh, this is as I told. Squads are e Polish in space, and Rattlings e are Spanish in space. So I have to have that legendary match against Ace when I will be playing uh, Jaegers or Salvagers and he will be playing Rattlings and it will be epic, like, who is shorter and <laughs> who is more stubborn. Like, uh, for me, like, uh, 40k for me was always a funny setting, like, uh, especially at this stage when... Uh, when GW is basically doing the thing which they always done. So they are coming and they are not inventing like the role, uh, lore to, they want to adapt to some changes. Like they want to make female custodies. This is a very good example. Uh, mm. And I don't care that in imaginary world somebody uh, told that she can be a woman and uh, all the very hardy players that are doing the rampage i don't care i cared about the quality of storytelling like this is not the this is not the solution for building a frav that you are coming and telling no it was always like that sorry you have misreaded this is like treating people like idiots so i was never never uh, feeling that 40k is a very uh, very serious setting for me mm -hmm. it was like a more a uh, uh, more, more a parody. It was, of... it was very tongue in cheek when it first started. You know, orcs yeah, yeah, having yeah. a Cockney accent. Like, where did that come from? Exactly. It's just because it was a British company and it was fun. Yeah, exactly. So th this this was a parody, and so it needed a parody faction. Like right? Rattlings is a parody faction. Like they have sausages and they have sandwiches on their equipment. I don't know if you saw on the minis that there is a sniper guy who have a big sandwich next to him. Is that a coffee him. cup? I think there was a coffee cup. That yeah, they were, you know, coffee cup leader the have co so. coffee cup. Co co I think coffee the lore cup. for the pair of teams is pretty funny because it's like yes. in the background, the gun is shooting. Everyone else has left to defend the gun and they left behind the Rattlings and the Ogrins because they aren't smart enough to follow orders. So they're just hanging out, having a smoke, eating a, eating a second breakfast, defending the gun, and then the orcs show up, the Space Marine orcs. Well, and, and, and what can be an issue? What can, what can go wrong? Like, it is super cool. And my favorite rattling is the Sly Marble rattling. Yeah. The guy who has such a big knife that it is like a half of his, of his height. So probably about around 
15 inches maybe <laughs> but still it looks hilariously so uh, i adore this I, I adore this uh, release uh, yeah. and i will for sure buy and and paint and play like i think they will be cool i i love the idea of the yeah. i think i'm i'm pretty excited for it it sounds like you know it's so it's good to hear that Poland is doing very well with the new edition of Kill Team. Were there any other tournaments you wanted to give a shout out to before we split for the day? Oh, uh, because for our team tournament, it is already too late for anybody. But we'll have one master still this year, which is our Christmas uh, tradition. Mm. So uh, right at the beginning of the December, we will have a tournament in Krakow. Uh, and Krakow is quite a tourist place, uh, so probably not from USA because it is hell of a trip to come. Yeah. But uh, there are people from UK f uh, or maybe other countries which are probably listening to your podcast. Uh, please feel invited. We are calling that Red Gobo tournament, and this this would this would be a super cool place because you can go and play two uh, days event. And then you can go to the trip around the city of kings in Poland. So it is, it is, it is pretty cool. So invite yeah. to everybody. Uh, and this is all, I think. All right, Mateusz, thanks for coming on, talking in depth about the Inquisition agents and the horrifying mech equivalent army that has hit the lines of Kill Team everywhere. It's been fun to have you on for a second time. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure. And thank you, listeners, for listening until the end. 